it is that it is a book that has errors but i'm here to tell you that the word of god is not prison the word of god can never be completely banned and i know that some states try to ban the bible but let me tell you they're going to have to try very hard because it won't be possible the word of god is what every man is from he said that with the word of god he brought us forth we are alive because of the word of god we are alive because of the breath of god we all have breath within us and therefore we can walk we can talk we can do it we can live because of the breath of god it is god that gives us this breath it wasn't by our will that we decided to be created that we decided to be here it wasn't our will it was the will of god that created us and for us to be here so that should let you know that god does exist that god is a real god to whom we must give account So I'm going to take you to John chapter 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16 is a very popular verse. It is a very well-known verse. Some of you might even know this verse. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And all it takes is to believe in God. All it takes is to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? It is the will of God that he gave us you know, life for us to live in this world. But it was also the will of God to give us eternal life. Eternal life in Jesus Christ. Not only to have breath of life, in this life but also in the world that is to come because there is a world that is to come okay and that's going to be an eternity there's going to be no temporary life there's going to be no death it's just going to be eternal life and you might and you will be able to breathe and to walk and to live in that world and that is the that is the gift of god of what he wants to give us because god has many promises that he wants to give all his people because God loves all of you. I mean, you guys were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And because God loves all of you, he wants you also to partake in eternal life through Jesus Christ. That is why this verse is so, so, so powerful. Because it wasn't that we loved God first, but that he loved us. But that God loved us first and sent his son to bear our iniquities, to bear our sins. You know, it was Jesus Christ, the Son, who bared our sins on the cross, who was tortured and endured the wrath of God so that we might be spared from the wrath of God, so that we might escape the wrath of God. And these are things that your churches don't want to teach you. They don't want to teach you that God has a wrath because God is love but also God has a wrath and his wrath will be executed on all unrighteousness and wicked works that are being done upon the earth and so but despite our wicked ways despite the, our evil ways that we that we are living in 
despite the wicked works that we live in, that we do with our body, with our mouth, with our thoughts, despite that, he still loved us and still wanted to give us a second chance, a second chance to have, to have peace with God, to have peace, peace with God. And it's wonderful because at the beginning of creation, God made man not only in, in his physical image, but also in his character, that we might do works of good works and not of wicked works, that we might not envy or have wrath towards our neighbor or have anger, that we might not have sadness, that we might not do harm to our neighbor, that we might not be revengeful and take vengeance on our neighbor, that we might not backbite or backstab or murder or hurt in any kind of way. You know, those are the wicked works that I'm, that I'm saying to you. But because God is so faithful, he's so righteous, he's so good, that despite doing all those things, he still loved us and still spared us from his wrath. That is why John, the verse John 3.16 is such a powerful, is such, a, such an amazing, a faithful verse. Because it was God telling us that he loved us so much that he spared us. That, so that we might be saved. So that we might be forgiven of our sins. Because we're all sinners and we all fall short of the grace of God. And we need a savior. No one can save himself. You live for God and you will die for God. Those eat, when you eat, you eat for God. And when you don't eat, you don't eat for God. So that God may let you know that you breathe and you live because of God. That's why he says it is because of God's will that he gives us days to live. That he lets us see the sun rise and the sun set. It is the will of God. Who allows that and we don't appreciate those things we take them for granted there's many people who don't get to see the sun rise there are many people who live short lives there are even babies that are born that don't even get to live past 24 hours and so you're lucky that you have been given all the years of life that you have been given you know that is because the will of God he has so much grace and mercy the Bible says that the, that the mercy of God is new every day, every day. That's the wonderful thing about God is that he's so faithful, he's so merciful. And so he wants you to know that mercy. He wants you to know what is his will for you so that you might be able to come out of wickedness that this world is under. Because the, the course of this world works under wickedness. You have to understand that the ruler of this world is the devil. The devil is the ruler of this world. And everything that is done in under the sun is of the devil. Everything is done. Everything. The whole world and its system is all under the power of Satan. It's all under the power of the devil. It is? Yes, it is. Be careful with it. It's, it's funny, right? But the thing is that what people don't understand is that if you do not, if you die in your sins, you will be ensnared by, the, by Satan. And that's a, that's a scary thing. That's another reason why Jesus Christ came into the world. So that he might be able to set you free from the captivity of Satan. Because if you follow the course of this world and you continue to live in your sinful ways, and you die in your sins, you will automatically go to hell. And you will automatically uh, be held captive by the power of, of the devil, by the power of Satan. And this is something that your churches don't want to teach you. They don't want to teach you that hell exists, that the devil is real. The devil is very real. And he's so real that it's just, it's very, very scary. Uh, if you were to know the real truth about what's going on. But I'm here to tell you that that's why the Holy Bible was given to us, so that it would be an instruction for us, so that it would give us knowledge.
so that we might understand what's really going on in the world. We might understand, you know, what is our purpose of living. And we must understand that we have an enemy. You see, sometimes we think, oh, well, if I have a family member who's my enemy, I have a family member who's against me, and you think that that's your enemy, or you don't get along with someone at work, then you think that's your enemy. No, but there is a, a, a bigger enemy, a much more uh, ravenous and an and, and, and evil enemy that is against and is after the soul of mankind, after the soul of every woman and man, after the soul of everybody. And that is the, and that is Satan, that is the devil. And he's after the soul of every single person. And the fact is that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, it clearly says that woe unto the inhabitants of the world. Woe unto the inhabitants of the world because Satan has come upon you. Because Satan has fallen on the earth and he's on the earth right now as we speak, roaming to and fro on the earth, going back and forth on the earth. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may destroy. Devour means to consume, to destroy, to, to um, ensnare, to, hold, to trap. And uh, the Bible clearly says in, in, the, in the Peter that there is, that Satan is like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. So it's important that we understand that we have a serious enemy. That we have a serious enemy that is after our souls. And as long as you continue to live in sin, you become a victim of the devil. As long as you continue to live in sin, you become a victim of the devil. And it's, it's, it's sad and it's a terrible truth. But... That is the reason why Jesus Christ said we must repent. We must repent. We must repent of our sins. Because if we repent of our sins, we have a good conscience toward God saying that we do not want to continue to do wicked works. Because the wicked works that are done under the sun in this world is of Satan. The wicked works that are done under the sun and in this world is of Satan. The drinking of alcohol, the fornication, having wrath and anger, lusting, okay, envying, having jealousy. These are all works and the character of Satan. And so it was not meant for us to walk in those works. It was not meant for us to do those works. It wasn't meant for us. It was meant for us to do righteous works, to do good works, okay, to do works that, that follow the character and the will of God. Because the will of God is righteous work, is good work. That's the will of God. The will of God is not to drink alcohol. The will of God is not to lust. The will of God is not to have jealousy. The will of God is not to be angry. The will of God is not to have wrath. But the contrary, the will of God is to have love, joy, and peace. The fruits of the Spirit is clearly mentioned in the Bible. That it is joy, peace, love, long-suffering, forbearing with one another, forgiving one another. Those are the, 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 those are the, 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 um, the traits, I guess you could say, of the character of God. And He wants you to have that character. He wants you to have love and joy and peace and be righteous and be holy. That is that is the will of God for you. The will of God is not for you to be to to to, to do drugs or to drink alcohol or to fornicate or to be in wrath or jealousy. Okay? That is not the the will of God for you. And so that is why the Bible is so important because it is a revelation of the will of God for us. Because we all need, again I say, a savior. We all need to know that every man, every man's duty is to obey the word of God, it is to obey the commandments of God. That is every man's duty. And so, 
for not obeying the commandments of God, for not obeying the gospel of God, that's where condemnation comes in. And you must understand that if you don't obey, and you must understand that if you don't obey the word of God, if you don't keep the commandments of God, if you don't do the word of God, then you will be condemned. Because the, the Bible clearly says that if you don't obey the gospel, then there will be condemnation. And so I'm here to tell you this so that you would know that, so that you would know the truth. And the truth will set you free, amen. The truth will set you free. And so God wants to set you free, but you gotta know the hard truth. You gotta know the good and the bad. You gotta know that you, that, that every decision that you make, every choice that you make has consequences. Every, everything that you choose to do in this, in this world is not gonna be a free game for you. You are not gonna just do what you wanna do and live in pleasure and not pay the price for it. Not, not pay the consequences for it. You're not gonna do wicked works and get away with it. It, does, it doesn't work that way. Everybody will have to give an account to God for the works that they have done on the earth, good and bad, everybody. And so I'm here to tell you the severity of the situation because God clearly says that, that he wants his people to fear him, that he wants his people to fear him in the sense that he wants people to know that it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of God. It is a truly fearful thing to fall in the hands of God. And so I want you to understand that the wisdom that is given to us through by the, by the Holy Bible, by the Holy Scriptures, is for our good. It is for our benefit. It is to instruct us in righteousness. It is to instruct us in righteousness. And, and that is exactly what the will of God is, is for. And that is why the will of God is revealed to us in the, in the scriptures, in the Bible. So that we might know the way of righteousness. Because every judgment of God, every commandment of God is good judgment. Every judgment of God, every commandment of God is righteous judgment. And it's the truth. He says in Proverbs that there is nothing perverse and nothing forward. Nothing perverse in, in the word of God. There's nothing perverse in the commandments of God. And so he wants you to know what are his judgments. He wants you to know what are his statutes. He wants you to know what are his commandments. So that you might know the way of righteousness. And you might be set free from the captivity of Satan. Okay? Who will help, because Satan will hold captive every single person who does not, who, who lives in sin and does not obey the commandments of God. And that is just the way it, it works. And I'm here telling you this because to, so that you might be free. So that you might know the truth. Because the truth will set you free. Okay? And uh, the only thing that can set you free is the Word of God. It is the only thing that can set you free. And it's, it's you know, and people just live their lives, all their lives, thinking that they don't need God. But truly, everybody has skeletons in their closet, and everybody has hurts and problems. And I'm here to tell you that rather than holding on to those hurts and problems, Jesus Christ can set you free from that. Can set you free. But all he asks and all he requires is that you hearken to him. That you uh, hear the word of God for yourself. And that you um, do follow the commandments of God. That you do follow what the word says. And he will set you free. And he will clean you out from all the hurt. And, and cleanse you from all the hurts and all the problems and all the frustrations and, and all the stress and all the sicknesses and diseases that you might have. Because some of you have sicknesses and diseases. Let me tell you, I can tell you that in the natural, people cannot see. People cannot see in the natural, okay? 
the, the, the filth that everybody has. But I'm here to tell you that if you were to see in the supernatural, in the spiritual, If you were to see in the spiritual, you will see that people have serpents on them, that people have scorpions on them, that people have bugs on them. Yeah, because that people have spirits following them, spirits attached to them, demons attached to them. Yeah, in the natural, you can't see that. But in the spiritual, it's really going on. That's why people suffer from nightmares, that's why people suffer from demonic possession. That's why people suffer from sleep paralysis. That's why people suffer from anger and from outbursts of wrath and all sorts of other odd behaviors because of unclean spirits, because of demons that are attached to people. And at the last days that we're living in, there's going to be a continuation of more spirits attaching themselves to people, more demons attaching themselves to people because the people are rejecting the gospel. The people are rejecting the spirit of God, which can be found in the word of God. And because of that, there's going to be more odd behaviors. There's going to be more, there's going to be more hatred in the world. There's going to be more violence in the world. There's going to be more um, murders in the world because of the fact that that there are so many demons going around and attaching themselves to people, making them do terrible things. I mean, there are there was a recent case of a grandfather who killed his grandson. A grandfather who killed his grandson. Then you had a husband who killed his wife and his children. Okay? These are the works of the last days. This is letting you know that evil is abounding on the earth. That, that because of these evil spirits that are on the earth, because of the power that the devil has upon the earth, there's going to be more horrible things that are going to go on. And, and it's unfortunate because... There are children that get hurt, unfortunately, and women, you know, that get hurt. I'm not saying men don't get hurt, but what I'm saying is that a lot of, there's going to be a lot of victims because of this. And so it's so important that you have, that it's so important that in these last days that you um, listen to the word of God, that you live and do the word of God. It's so important in these last days because you need to be protected. You need to be protected um, from these things that are going on, from these 